All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Arts Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, July 24th. So uh, I would say, you know, even though we're looking at S&Ps here, uh, which finished up, what did S&P finish up for the day? 32 basis points for futures and 47 basis points. Uh, so up about a half a percent for SPY. But um, man, there was, I would say, a really good participation day for some of the more aggressive or risk on sectors i would say so if we take if we drill down to my spreadsheet here where it shows per percentage change uh from the open but also if you look at just at the one day uh moves we had uh the queues up 70 basis points right so nice day uh really where i'm going to talk a lot about today was um was the small caps right up 1.7 percent from the open a huge move up 1.9 percent so i'll go over that chart in just a second but um, you could see why i'm kind of talking about this as pretty much a full participation day because you know you just don't see many days like this where you have so many green areas that i've got on my spreadsheet normally we actually see you know if you've been following my videos for the last couple of weeks there's a lot more sectors in red uh, than there are in the green. Uh, the the uh, well, I shouldn't say that, but it's it should it's it's normally pretty split. And um, even though market breadth has been pretty good for the last couple of weeks, maybe showing a little bit of deterioration up until today. But I think that changed today. I'll um, I'll I'll text out the uh, the winners and losers for 52 week highs. But yeah, I mean this was the main story today that I think, anyways, these banks. If you viewed my video last night i was talking about how this group perked up yesterday and um i hope you were able to take advantage of this because uh certainly uh, we put on a nice long iwm trade that um that that crushed it today and um and that was even after iwm was already up uh you know about three quarters of a percent uh because again i'm always waiting for a little bit of confirmation you know and i think if you're if you lean to the side of a technical analyst sometimes you will not be able to spot the the exact turns in the market but sometimes you kind of wait for a little bit of confirmation so here's what the iwm this has got me really excited uh in the in the market today because this has been really tight uh i don't want to say coiled because usually coiled it takes three moving averages i've got the five the 20 and the 50 on mine but there's definitely between these two moving averages really really tight price action so i think this sets up well um i did take what two targets in my new swing trade but hey i'm happy you know if we get a little bit of weakness in the morning i'm happy to kind of structure a new trade or add to my existing trade in iwm and you know, always I think it's important when you look at these I when you look at these ETFs is to know where the sector uh, distribution is. So, for example, IWM the largest largest weighting in sectors is banks. So, what did the banks do today? I mean, this is also pretty interesting. Uh, this KRE, which I I even had the the regional banking ETF in the uh in the member newsletter not last weekend but the weekend before and i said hey this kind of looks interesting um to me it looks again the price action price action like pretty tight in terms of uh you know kind of really coiled up in terms of those moving averages right you could see three of them wrapped around one another so it just looked like when this happens um if this is new to you uh basically when the price action gets this tight usually a big move is coming now it could be there's a good question in the room earlier hey well why don't you put uh, you know if you if you think there's a big move coming and you're not certain which direction it's going to be why don't you buy calls and puts uh, a little bit out of the money sure i i you could definitely do that um but you're going to be sacrificing some premium right because only one side is obviously going to work provided that you get the big move I would rather wait until you till it starts to lean and go and go one way. So you'll be a little bit late, uh, but you're not. It's I think it's a better alternative than buying calls and buying puts, right? Which was a great question um, when you're expecting a big move in, in one direction. I will generally wait for the move to start to take place. But yeah, I mean this this gets interesting. So you know, and the, then the other thing to kind of think about this is tomorrow we we have the ECB, and then next week we have. Uh, we have FOMC, so it, it's sometimes the markets will price in moves before the actual news, right? Sometimes the, the market always seems to know 
not always, but uh, I said always seems to know, but sometimes the market seems to know ahead of time what the actual news is going to be. And then by the time the news comes out, it becomes a sell the news, right? Buy the rumor, sell the news. So I don't know. Could the market be telling us that they're only going to be that they're only going to cut 25 basis points and then kind of be uh, stand off on that? Um, it could also be that maybe remember that the short and I went over this in last night's video, too. But remember, the Fed dictates short-term rates. They don't dictate, for the most part, long-term rates. So TLT, I talked about a possible head and shoulders pattern. You know, if this thing does break and yields go higher, that's a good thing for banks. So that also could be what is maybe some investors are thinking about, why this group went nuts today. But um, I really like it. So, you know, we profited off of it. Um, you know, make sure that you are thinking about if you're trading options and so forth again i'm not you know i'm not giving any advice or recommendations but you know make sure you think about taking some money off the table as well considering that we've had a very nice run um you could see somebody was positioning here in the vix today for some more volatility notice where the vix is at these levels right where it is pretty depressed uh, i'm you know i am shocked as anybody that we're all the way down here in a 12 in the vix right which is the top i look at by the way the vxn and the rvx this is the um the vix is just for the s p 500 the vxn is for the nasdaq 100 and the rvx is for small caps right but um you know somebody as there was a nice bloomberg article out about this vix uh activity um, i think for the most part people are thinking you know it's probably somebody buying some insurance being that it's pretty cheap in VIX calls, right? So these were the uh, August 21st and a whole lot of them traded. Let's see how many total uh, because some were rebooked. There's 260,000 of these, right? So what's the amount of premium? 260,000 times about, where they where they trade these? around 30 33 cents let's say yeah it's about uh it's almost nine million dollars in premium so that's no small feat for that one all right so um so that's iwm uh, sorry that's uh that's the vix so yeah so somebody's buying a little bit of insurance and as you should when you get a in my opinion <clears throat> right everything of course i'm just talking about for information purposes only but in my opinion, when you get a full participation date like this, it's usually a great day to take some money off the table. Now, you can day trade, of course, like, like we were doing as well, and um, you know, legging into some, some positions. But um, it's also a great day to kind of you know, be able to, to make sure that you're taking off some risk. Even though I am still seeing, like, I'm seeing a lot of interesting setups. You know, so we'll see how this materializes. Salesforce is kind of interesting. This closed 2.2%. This thing ha really hasn't done anything, especially since they announced that they were buying Tableau software. Um, a couple other software names. You could see, you know, besides uh, the semiconductors, which I think the move has basically been realized here in the semiconductors, now, was up uh, another, two, what, 2.6% today for the, for the SMH. Unreal. Um, and you kind of just had a hunch that this was going to happen after Texas Instruments reported a good number. Xilinx, by the way, good illustration of how to use a VPOC. Uh, Xilinx went up all the way to this upside v VPOC, right? So this, I thought, was, um, was very nice if you were in a trade. And it makes a move like this. This is an earnings move. You have to ask yourself, what else are you looking for? Um, after a move like that, you can see it trading down and kind of giving back today's move. But hey, the upside VPOC was realized. So re a really nice gift going into earnings for Xilinx. Uh, a couple other, might as well go through a couple other names. Facebook, uh, they're, you know, they had a monster day today. And uh, we talked about earlier in the week, there was all those uh, Facebook calls that were purchased. Um, I don't think that that is going to work, right? We talked about how far out of the money that those were. I think those were the, was it 217 and a half, I want to say, unless I'm thinking about something differently. This was the one that had 18,000 open interest. Yeah, I think it was the 217 and a half. If I'm, and and if, I'm, if I'm not remembering correctly, please let me know. I don't think it was the two seven and a halves, but I think it was the weekly uh, 
either I think it was the 217 and a half that I'm, I'm going from memory that we saw a bunch of activity in a, a couple days ago. So um, we kind of formulated a little bit of a, a plan for whether or not that that would work out. Um, and if I'm wrong with that strike, let me know. I have a feeling it may have been 207 and a half, but I think it was 217. So anyway, uh, I, regardless, I don't think either one is would be smashing here. All right, so that's Facebook. Um, interesting, a couple other names. Uh, there's a few names that are down here after hours. ServiceNow, which is, has been very consistent. I played this name for earnings uh, and did not get this right, but um, you know, we'll see. These names, Cadence, for instance, if you remember, uh, Cadence was another name that I liked for earnings, and this thing came all the way back and made a 52-week high today. So you know, I think some of these names, the only thing I heard with ServiceNow their numbers i think their numbers were great but i think their subscription numbers were a little bit light is what was saying um this is service now disappoints uh sinks after subscription billings but their numbers their their uh their second quarter revenue top line and bottom line beat so i i guess a little bit weak on um subscription billing. So yeah, even though the, the software names had a huge day today, maybe they digest a little bit if, if ServiceNow does not come back. Um, keep in mind, a lot of times you have to wait for the earnings call too to see what happens. PayPal also down pretty decently. They said they have some delays with some of their product features, I believe. Um, and then Tesla also down. So you have more names. Remember yesterday, everything besides what iRobot was up after hours today it's a little bit different after the close you know every day is a little bit different for these earnings uh these earnings results that come in and keep in mind this morning they weren't all that great either with caterpillar and boeing uh falling so just going back to um the spreadsheet yeah i mean a lot of good uh, really a, a lot of nice price action um, here was the all the software names that did pretty well. TTD, another downgrade, and it manages to rally and shake it off very nicely. Um, AYX had a big day. Uh, we mentioned Salesforce already. And, and again, the banks, I think, really uh, a kind of change in, uh, change in stance uh, for the banks because, as we know, the banks really haven't done too much. They've now done. They're, they have reported, done reporting earnings, but um, really a nice play there. So a lot of nice, a lot of nice winners in the trading room today. Uh, fun day, but um, I hope you took a little bit of profits and took some money off the table for, uh, for the rest of the week. Because again, we still have a lot more earnings reports to go before the end of the week. All right, guys, that's it for today's, uh, for today's video. Have a great night, everybody. And see you tomorrow.